So if atomic mass units seem funny, this unit might seem even funnier, the mole. A mole um, is often called the chemist's dozen. It's a counting unit. What is a dozen? It's 12. 12 what? 12 of anything, right? It could be 12 people, 12 donuts, 12 cars, 12 planets, anything. It doesn't matter. It's just 12 of whatever you're talking about. The mole is like a dozen, but the number's different. Really, really different. <coughs> So mole is the chemist's dozen. It's not a small, furry, nearly blind animal that burrows underground. It's not a black beauty mark on your face. And it's not mole. It's not a sauce. It's the mole. It's the chemist's unit. And this unit was also created um, to be convenient. So the um, one definition of the mole is that it is the number equal to the number of carbon atoms in 12.01 grams of carbon. And that probably doesn't do much for you. Another definition is one mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd units of that thing. And this number here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, has a name. We call it Avogadro's number after the man whose work led to the discovery of that number, Amadeo Avogadro. And he lived back, um, I think, if I remember correctly from the other class, I think he was born in 1776. So that's kind of cool. He shares birth year with our country. So a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd units. You could have a mole of people be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd people. You can have a mole of atoms or of molecules. It's, it's a crazy big number. It's a 6 with 23 zeros after it. Crazy big. Um, I need to write these down because I'm not sure they're actually quite correct. Um... I think I remember reading that if you had a mole of marbles, it would cover the United States to a depth of eight miles. The entire country, eight miles deep in marbles. Not the shooter marbles, the regular little marbles. That's a lot of marbles, right? Talk about a pile of marbles. So that's a really, really big number. This number, um, so one mole of carbon is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And by its definition, that is the number of atoms in 12.01 grams of carbon. I have to tell you one other thing about this number. So October 23rd is a chemist's holiday. We call that mole day. It's celebrated from 6.02 a.m. to 6.02 p.m. We may be nerds, but we have fun. From Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, October 23rd, 10.23. Okay, so what I find personally so crazy cool about this is that my husband is a chemist and I am a chemist, and our fourth son was born on Mole Day. He was born on October 23rd, and even better, he weighed 10 pounds, and he was 23 and a half inches long. So he was 10.23 on 10.23. The only thing cooler is if he had been born at 6.02 a.m. or p.m., but we missed that. It was more like 8.30. Mm -hmm. yeah. We tried. It just didn't work out. That's how babies are. They come when they come. So Mole Day is <coughs> a special day for us. It's, it's also the birthday of Michael. We considered giving him the middle name Avogadro. We actually discussed it for about two minutes and then wisely decided against that. So a sample of an element with a mass equal to the element's average atomic mass in grams contains one mole of atoms. Okay, so 
this is just, I don't know why, it's a hard concept to convey. So let's just keep thinking about carbon. So one carbon atom weighs how much in atomic mass units? 12.01 atomic mass units, right? We just talked about that. One mole of carbon atoms weighs 12.01 grams. See how convenient that is? These numbers on the periodic table, the numbers under the element symbols, in atomic mass units, that's the mass of one atom, the average mass. But if this is in grams, it's the mass of a chemist's dozen of atoms. So if this has the unit gram, it's one mole. If it's the unit atomic mass unit, then it's one atom. But the number is the same. And that's why the number, Avogadro's number, is what it is, so that that works out so beautifully. Um, mole is a short word. It's only four letters, and yet it has an abbreviation. It's often abbreviated MOL. So just be aware of that, MOL and MOLE, exactly the same thing. And you can't abbreviate it M because M is meter. So you have to be careful with your abbreviations. So here this table compares one mole sample of several different elements. So if we have a one mole sample of aluminum, we've got 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Just like if we had a dozen aluminum atoms, it would be 12. A dozen of anything is 12. A mole of anything is this crazy number. The mass of that will be 26.98 grams. That's the number on the periodic table. A mole of gold, same number of atoms, but it weighs a lot more, 196.97 grams. That's because one gold atom weighs a lot more than one <coughs> aluminum atom. And so just like with the jelly beans and the mints, same number of candies, same number of atoms, but it weighs more because each individual piece weighs more. So let's calculate the number of iron atoms in a 4.48 mole sample of iron. So just for grins, first... Let's change that unit mole for dozen. First, let's calculate the number of atoms in 4.48 dozen, because that's a lot easier. So 4.48 dozen atoms. We want to put dozen on the bottom and number of atoms on the top. How many atoms in a dozen? You know this. How many atoms in a dozen? Twelve. Thank you. It doesn't matter that they're atoms. So twelve atoms in a dozen, because there's twelve anythings in a dozen of that thing. So 4.48 dozen times twelve tells us 53.76 atoms. Now, you can't have a fraction of an atom, but you can't have 4.48 dozen atoms either. But that's just an example. So let's do the real problem now. 4.48 moles. It's the same process. If I ask you how many eggs... You bought five dozen eggs at Costco. How many eggs do you have? Sixty. You can do that. Oh, I just take dozen and multiply by twelve, and I've got the number of eggs. Same idea here, except you're going to have to use your calculator because the number isn't twelve. But we're going to have number of atoms on top. We're going to have mole on the bottom. Dimensional analysis tells us what to do there. But you can also do the problem using dozen and then copy it using the chemist dozen. That's another way. 
How many atoms in one mole? Well, it's that crazy number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, you're pretty much going to have to use scientific notation on your calculator now. That's why I, I tried to hammer you with it in Chapter 2. 4.48 times 6.022 EE23 equals. I'm going to round this off to three significant figures. So will give me 2.70 times 10 to the 24th atoms. That's a lot of atoms. Any questions? One mole is Avogadro's number of things. Just like one dozen is 12 things. One mole <coughs> is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. Well, I'm just using the rules of, of significant figures. This number has three significant figures. This number has four. Avogadro's number is not an exact number. We do, I, I'm sure they know it to more places, but it's just we don't really need it for the sorts of calculations that we do. So it's, we just remember it with four. This has four, which is more, and so this number is what limits us to three significant figures. Let's do another one. Determine the number of copper atoms in, in a 63.55 gram sample of copper. So we've got 63.55 grams of copper. And we want to find the number of atoms. Well, there's a number on the periodic table here. This tells us the mass in grams of one mole, right? Um, a lot of periodic tables, the one I give you to use during, during exams, has all of the masses on the periodic table rounded to four significant figures. And that's just to kind of make things easier to deal with. The periodic tables we have on the wall here um, some, of, some of the elements have more. Like here, xenon has six significant figures. What I'm going to use in lecture in my examples is I'm just going to use four. Partly because that's what's on that other periodic table that we're going to be using, and partly because I have a bunch of these memorized. And it's just easier. Um, we're learning the process here. We don't care um, too much about the exact, exactness of our calculation. So on this periodic table, it says 63.546, but with four sig figs, that would round to 63.55 grams. So we look at the periodic table, and we see that one mole of copper weighs 63.55 grams. How many particles, how many atoms are in one mole? Six, come on, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So one mole of copper weighs 63.55 grams, which is equal to Avogadro's number of atoms. So right here, this looks like a conversion factor, doesn't it, that we could use to go from grams to atoms. Do we actually have to do any math in this example? No. It looked like it was maybe going to be a tricky problem. But this, this is the mass of one mole of copper. So how many particles do we have? We've got this many, Avogadro's number. Any questions?
This question's a little bit of a trick question. Which of the following is closest to the average mass of one atom of copper? We can answer this without doing any calculations. So A might be appealing because we look at the periodic table and it says 63.55 underneath copper. But does one atom weigh 63 grams? No. Must be E, right? Even if we don't do any calculation, it says which of the following is closest? It must be E. Because the mass of an atom is 10 to the negative 20 something. It's really, really small in grams. That was a trick question. A sample of 26.98 grams of aluminum has the same number of atoms as how many grams of gold? Well, 26.98 is the mass of one mole of aluminum. <coughs> one mole is Avogadro's number of particles. What's the mass of one mole of gold? 196. So, it must be C. 197. Again, that's kind of a trick, make you think question. That's plenty for today. I won't worry about that one.